Some want to live within the sound of a church or a chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. Charles Thomas Studd, or C.T. Studd, shocked Western Europe when he abandoned his athletic career and wealthy lifestyle for the sake of Christ. This path would take him through dangerous jungles, angry rioters, and even preaching the gospel to cannibals in the heart of Africa. Charles was born in England on December 2, 1860 into a powerful and extremely wealthy Victorian family. His father, Edward Studd, became a Christian when his sons were teenagers as a result of a campaign headed by the famous evangelist Dwight L. Moody. Through this, Charles eventually became a Christian, along with some of his other family members. While Studd was a student at Eton College, he continued immersing himself in many sports, but especially cricket. This, however, was interrupted by the death of his father. Charles went on to study at Trinity College and Cambridge University, and there, he and his brother continued to demonstrate their elite athleticism while playing cricket all the way from England to Australia. This made C.T. and his brother George a household name back in England. However, the highs of being famous quickly changed for C.T. when his brother came down with a severe case of pneumonia. He sat helpless as he watched his brother lay unconscious for days. Charles asked himself, what is all this fame and flattery worth when a man comes face to face with eternity? After three days, George regained consciousness and made the slow journey back to recovery. This time marked a new stage in CT's faith. He felt called to be a missionary to China, and the more he thought and prayed about it, the more assured he became. He broke the news to his family members and was accused of breaking his mother's heart by his uncle. Most around him branded it as foolish nonsense, while other family members got other Christians to tell him that there was so much work to do here in England. One night, his brother Kinney asked him if he was proud of breaking his mother's heart. CT responded saying, let's pray together. I don't want to be pigheaded. I just want to do God's will. CT remained at peace about his decision. He was determined to live for Christ, no matter what it would cost him. He then met Hudson Taylor, who was 52 at the time and an established missionary in China. Taylor greatly enjoyed Studd's enthusiasm for China and encouraged him to use his fame and popularity to challenge others. Little did Studd know how much influence he would have. Six more students joined Studd to form a group known as the Cambridge Seven. Hudson Taylor arranged for meetings where the Seven would speak and be greeted by hundreds who wanted to hear why the famous cricketer was giving up everything for the mission field. A booklet containing the testimonies of these seven was published, and it became so well known that even Queen Victoria was found reading it. It was now time for the Cambridge Seven to leave for China, and at 24 years of age, he looked back at his family for the last time, until they were too small to see. The boat took him across the English Channel to France, and from there he would pass through a number of countries in a six-week-long journey to China. They were greeted in China by an English speaker, none other than Hudson Taylor himself. The seven friends were amused by their new clothes they were given as they were required to wear traditional Chinese outfits and cut their hair in the style of that area. Stud then made the journey to Shanghai and then on to Chin Wu, where he turned 25 with no one to celebrate it. A year passed and he continued to learn the language and minister to the Chinese, and a few weeks after his 26th birthday, Charles received a large letter in the mail. He opened it and found copies of stocks and bank deposits that his father had left for him as an inheritance. The total sum came to over $5 million in today's money. After some thought and prayer, Stud decided that he would give the entirety of this vast sum away. A 26-year-old multi-millionaire, Charles Thomas Stud, gave away his entire inheritance to promote the spread of the gospel. These funds went on to the Moody Bible Institute, George Mueller's orphanages, the Salvation Army, and many others. While ministering in China, Stud met and married a young woman and missionary named Priscilla. Together, they had about five dollars and some bedding as their only physical possessions. C.T. wrote, The first house we had was a haunted house. It was the only one we could get in the city. We were determined to go where there was no European. For five years, we never went outside our doors without a volley of curses from our neighbors. C.T. and his new family were frequently yelled at, cursed out, and estranged by many of the Chinese because they viewed him as a foreign devil. Stud wrote, Everything that happened in the city, the Chinese blamed on us. There was a year drought. Our lives were at stake, for they held us responsible. Stud was also hated because he publicly opposed the practice of leaving baby girls to die in the woods. This practice was common because many of the Chinese in the area believed it was a curse to have a baby girl. Stud wrote, 
I went into a mother's house once and found her groaning, and then I asked where her baby was. It was born at daylight, and immediately it was just thrown into the moat or into the pagodas with a certain hole so that the wolves can jump in and get the baby when they want it. Charles and Priscilla went on to have four daughters in China, and he believed it was because God wanted to use him to show the importance and value of women being also made in the image of God. After 10 years in China, C.T. took a brief sabbatical. His family in England were shocked that none of his daughters spoke English and all of them dressed like the Chinese. Not only this, but Stud's health was very poor as the smoke-filled cities of China had all but destroyed his lungs. This made physical exertion very difficult for Stud. C.T. then moved his family to southern India to pastor a church, and there he converted many British officials and those in the local community. In 1908, Stud came across an article that caught his attention. Cannibals want missionaries. Why, of course they do, he thought, rather amused. He read about the missionary named Carl Kuhn, who had been ministering in Central Africa. Carl wrote that while there had been Arabs, traders, European explorers, and even big game hunters, no Christians had gone to the area. This problem spoke deeply to C.T.'s soul. From this point, Stud devoted his life to the Christless millions of Africa. Many cautioned him against this, but he would respond, If Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. At the time, Stud had no money, was 50 years old, and struggled to physically exert himself due to his poor health. Many of his doctors warned him about going to Africa due to the many dangers to his health that awaited him. After all, there was deadly diseases, pestilence, and nothing but a medical encyclopedia which he carried to help him overcome his sicknesses. Charles would always respond to the concerned doctors with the same answer. The world will have lost its biggest fool, and with one less fool to handicap him, God will do greater wonders still. There shall be no funeral, no tears, not even a death march. Congratulations on all around will take place. Our God will still be alive and nothing else matters. To die is gain. No doctor would end up approving Stud for the mission field. It was deemed that if he left, he most certainly would not return. During his time in Africa, he had frequent bouts of malaria as well as other sicknesses that brought him close to death. Stud would frequently hold evangelistic meetings and wrote of some of the past that these new believers had. We have some remarkable testimonies. I have done more sin than there is room in my chest. My father killed a man, and I helped eat him. Stead ministered in the Congo for multiple decades and went on to train hundreds of missionaries. On July 16, 1931, C.T. drifted in and out of consciousness. His gallstones were so severe that his pain increased every day for the past month that he struggled for every breath and would often only say one word. Hallelujah. Stud worked for 20 years amongst the tribes of the Congo and died at the age of 70. Thousands of Africans arrived at his funeral as drums carried the news for hundreds of miles. His preaching impacted thousands, but his legacy affected millions. There is so much more to the story of CT, and if you'd like to learn more, please check out these books that I use to help write the script for this video. I would also encourage you to check out our other video on C.T. Studd's most famous sermon, The Chocolate Soldier.